What was unique about Thai is, is that the more senior people who have been successful trying to help out the people who are just trying to get there. And that was very appealing to me. It was 1973 is when I left India and came to Canada. And then I was there till 84 and then went to Boston in 1984. And then somehow I got into entrepreneurship and built a company from 1990 to 97 or so. And at that point, it wasn't that common for people to be entrepreneurs. The exciting part of being an entrepreneur is, is not just for yourself, but everybody else that's with you suddenly realizing things that they never knew they could do before because you get thrown into all kinds of things. And that's a very exhilarating process. If I can make the same opportunity available to other people, it's a fantastic thing. So that's what motivated me to get the Boston chapter started. Usually entrepreneurs trust each other fairly easily. I think the conversation tends to be very easygoing because you can see that people are passionate about something. Their passion is genuine. And you can see that right away. I sort of believe that a lot of times people become successful and then they get stuck in this stratosphere and then they're lost. You know, they get become big CEOs surrounded by the VPs who tell them what they want to hear. And to me, that stops the process of reinventing yourself because you don't, you don't have any good information anymore. What's appealing about Thai is that not only does it allow you to reinvent yourself, but also it gives access to younger aspiring entrepreneurs. Because what I find in life is that everything is about benchmarking. When you meet somebody who's done something before, you set a very different benchmark for yourself. And once you set up a benchmark, rest is pretty easy actually. You know, if you hang around with people who jump four feet, you probably do four feet one inch and you think you're a big champ. And then you hang around with people who do seven, then you say, well, let me do more. And so this ability to connect more successful people with the people who are aspiring to be successful is, is a very powerful concept. And it's not that it's giving and taking, it, it goes both ways. You know, entrepreneurs tend to be naive, they tend to be optimistic. Because if you know everything that's going to be a problem, you'll never start anything. We came in 84, I used to work for Codex, you know, I started networking and getting to know people. It took about three years to get the green card. 87 is when I got the green card. As soon as I got the green card, I left and started my first company. First company was called Coral Networks. And those days, you know, starting companies was, was pretty tricky. You had to go without a salary at least for a year because the venture capitalists would have a fund of maybe $20 million. So for them to give you a million dollars, they wanted to make sure that you're committed, which meant you mortgaged your house, your wife, your kids, and everything else. And so my wife kept her job. I quit my job. We had two little kids. And, and it took about a year. But a dream come true at the end of the year, we were able to raise $3 million, which was just amazing. So I got on the payroll, and my wife got off the payroll, right? But unfortunately, within about four months into it, I and my partner had a difference of opinion. And then I had to leave. And so that was not an easy time in our life because I didn't have a job. My wife didn't have a job. We had two little kids. And most of the other people who had the kind of education that I had, who were senior executives in Fortune 500 companies, you know, they were all doing really well. But it never bothered me. And then it took about another six months to regroup and then started a company called Cascade Communications, which was pretty successful. I think entrepreneurship in general has become a mainstream thing. A lot of people are into it. I, I can look back 84, move to Boston and try to look for an entrepreneur, and you couldn't even spot one. But now they're everywhere. And what's exciting for me is now extending the same power of the innovation entrepreneurship to dollar a day people. And that's where I'm focusing most of my life now. The journey for the last 15 years has been pretty exciting. I, I turned 50 15 years ago, 2000, and I'd been an entrepreneur CEO for about 20 years. And so I and my wife decided that maybe it's time to do something else. So we started working on the foundation quite a bit. Now we're pretty much full-time on the foundation. The core idea behind the foundation is that there are three types of people in this world. There are people who are oblivious to everything. There are people who perceive problems and suffer problems, but choose to complain about it. And then there are people who see a problem and get all excited about it and they want to solve it. So if you look at a difference between a vibrant community and an impoverished community, a vibrant community, you always have people who are sort of looking for problems to solve. In fact, in the developed part of the economy where Thai 
usually operates. There is so much entrepreneurship now. Finding good problems to solve is a problem, right? And so we said, well, why can't we bring the same power to the impoverished communities? Because in the impoverished communities, you have most of the people who sit around and complain, not because they're bad guys, but just because the problems have become chronic and they've reached a steady state where they're deadlocked and there isn't an easy solution. But if you can get some of them to start thinking about solving a problem, they get so feverish about the whole thing that they, you can't sleep, right? You just keep thinking again and again and again. And finally, you find a solution. And when you crack that code, that's the aha moment. That's the moment when somebody becomes an active person as opposed to a passive sufferer in life. And that transformation is what we've been working on. You know, the biggest contribution I think you can make to the world is not to solve anybody's problems, but to get them excited about solving problems. If there's seven billion people, if you can get each one of them to be an active problem solver, then it's a very different world. And there's no problem that's hard enough for us to solve if everybody gets engaged. So what happens to our kids? I mean, they have to reinvent the world for themselves because none of this thing can be just handed over to somebody else. You know, ultimately, I think doing simple things in life and, and all the good things that people talk about, you do them not because somebody else tells you, because it's the best way to be. I really enjoy reinventing myself. You know, the biggest blessing anybody can have in life is to be able to get up in the morning and be excited about the day. You know, a lot of the people get stuck into some, some, something that they've done before. They don't like it anymore, but they're stuck. Throughout my life, I've always sort of done something, but I find that whatever you do in life, you know, at the beginning, it's tremendously exciting. But after a while, it becomes a chore. When it becomes a chore, I, need, I like to walk away for two reasons. Number one, it's boring. And secondly, there's somebody else for whom this is a fantastic opportunity. And it's my ability to walk away. But the walking away is not an easy process because you're giving up the whole thing and now you're going to the bottom of the ladder again. But if you do that, it's just a, a tremendously exciting experience. And I don't know if anybody can ever be successful enough, beautiful enough, wealthy enough to ensure your life to be happy forever. You know, you just have to keep reinventing yourself. And so I think humility comes from the fact that it's such a big world and you know so little. And there's so many new things that, that I'm always humbled by, just exposure to so many things, so many people. I find it very exciting.